Hi, this is Dave Vellante, and uh, we're here at Wikibon headquarters. I'm with my co-host here, Stu Miniman. And Stu is uh, just back from Interop last week, so Stu and I decided that we're going to sit down and share with you some of uh, Stu's findings. Stu, how was the show? It, it was a great show, Dave. Uh, you know, I, I didn't actually get to see a whole lot of the show uh, per se. I was in a lot of meetings, but um, it was a really great experience, a ton of new information I got there, and I'm really glad I could uh, spend the time to swing down to New York City for a couple of days to attend. So for those people who don't know Interop, Stu, tell us a little bit about the event. Um, so uh, the, the show's been around for many years, and it's gone through a lot of different names. So uh, the last time I had been, it had probably been about five years ago, it used to be NetWorld and Interop, like NetWorld plus Interop or N plus I, as they called it. Right. And now it's just called Interop, and it's supposed to be like, you know, the largest high-tech conference covering any, everything from virtualization, uh, green IT, cloud computing, uh, data center, uh, you know, it was kind, kind of a kind of a catch-all in the industry. Um, you know, obviously, I, I was really focusing on primarily the networking and data center pieces of it, um, but that kind of kind of bleeds over into cloud and some of the other pieces. How many people were there? Uh, so I, I heard numbers everywhere ranging from three thousand to six thousand. Um, realized that you could get in for free and go to the trade show floor, and the trade show floor was really packed, especially uh, on Wednesday when I was there when the free beer started going. Uh, it was really busy, but the sessions themselves actually weren't really all that crowded. So I only went to one panel, and uh, it was a great virtualization, uh, I'm sorry, convergence panel. Uh, they had IBM, Cisco, um, uh, IBM, Cisco, Amulex, and eGenera on the panel, and there were only about 30 people in the room, which was really disappointing uh, for some really good speakers and some good content. So the show is primarily geared toward the user audience, right? uh, Absolutely, the end users there. Um, there. There was a good vendor turnout, but a lot of end users, and it being in New York City, uh, it's probably a little bit more regional. Uh, they have uh, a bigger show in Las Vegas, and I hear that that's still uh, very well attended. So I would imagine uh, convergence was a big theme? Yeah, convergence was definitely a big theme for me. Uh, uh, covering, uh, you know, hearing the latest on Ethernet, fiber channel over Ethernet, um, converged infrastructure and all the flavors and how that really ties into cloud. A anything new that you picked up? Um, yeah, so, so, so a few things. So let, let, let's, I guess, go through some of the vendors I talked with. So I spent a lot of time talking with HP. So you were out in Barcelona, right. uh, and I think you got to see their, uh, their, new, their pods. Yeah, in fact, we went inside a pod. It was very cool. Yeah. Uh, we went in early in the morning the night we were supposed the morning we were supposed to fly out and so they had to power it up right. and it takes like i don't know 5 7 minutes to power it up and when it powers up the fans come on in a big way and right. we're standing there and whoosh, so you're inside this did you see one did they have one there no they, they they didn't have one there yeah so imagine you're inside you know a tra a trailer almost like a, 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 a an airstream you right. know like a camper yep. but 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 narrower it feels narrow it's probably wider in total but it feels narrow cuz there's all servers and you know, power and cooling in there, and uh, and just racked and stacked servers and storage. Okay. So yeah, so they were talking up the the pod work. Yeah, definitely. So I got to speak with their their vice president of converged infrastructure, and uh, it's Doug. I think it's Ote Hote uh, is is his, uh, his last name. Uh, and he was talking to me a uh, little bit about pods, and he was also talking to me about uh, kind of a future project that they've got coming called the HP Garage. Um, what was interesting is they just got a $7.3 million grant from the Department of Energy, and if you think, think about how the pod is kind of like a whole trailer that you can create a whole data center, the garage is a smaller version of that that you'd be able to plop inside an existing data center. Um, and uh, you think about where we're going with power and cooling, it's going to use water cooling, and it's going to use DC power on the inside, and be able to do about four to eight racks inside a data center, self-contained, uh, much better efficiencies on the power and the cooling. Uh, and as we know, that's one of the biggest uh, challenges uh, in, in data centers today is uh, keeping those costs for power and cooling uh, down. Yeah, so the cool thing about the pod that I saw was they, it basically, you order it, they right. announce this pod works, now they say you can have one in, as little as six weeks, but if you and I called up, we wouldn't have one in six weeks. It's got to be in their pipeline, and I know they've got a couple that went out to Microsoft, and they probably planned for it, and once they plan for it, and it's in the pipeline, and they're going to have all the parts and the equipment, then they can do it in six weeks, or you know, six to 12 weeks, let's say. Right. Um, but the cool thing about the pod that I recall was that it has a PUE out of the box of 1.2. Yeah. Now, the average data center is probably between, a PUE of probably between two and three, and what we mean is that normally, um, data centers, they power the IT equipment, and so for every watt you use to power the IT equipment, you need additional watts to, to power the power and the cooling, right. the power distribution and the cooling, and the average data center is probably twice 
the IT equipment needs maybe three times, and, there's, and HP saying it's only 20% additional power over the IT equipment to power these pods, which is very efficient. And, and I had a real interesting discussion talking about, you know, really where is the market for these pods? Because, you know, you've got, the, you know, the, the, the giant guys, I mean, the Googles out there, the Facebooks that have these just tremendously huge scalable data centers. Then you've got the service providers, and that's really where they think the pods are going to be going a lot, as well as they said there's certain companies that are going to be able to use this type of, type of technology. It's what they call uh, almost IT as a weapon. Mm -hmm. So rather than IT as a service, as a weapon, so the companies that say I want to be able to have massively scalable architectures, be able to provide these services, uh, and you know, even HP themselves are going to be a cloud provider the, using these kind of technologies. So it's going to be a while before these things go mainstream, is what you're implying. Yeah, yeah I, and I mean, I think if we look at any of these prepackaged solutions, these are not uh, you know massively selling you know huge volumes of them. So you know, pods and even the garage, um, there, there's certain enterprises that are going to do them. If you look at uh, the VCE coalition, Acadia's V blocks, this is not something that you know every commercial account is going to buy. It starts in the enterprise and it kind of works its way down market as as they make 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 things make sense. Was VCE at the show? Uh, so uh, VCE definitely had, uh, they, I, they didn't have a booth. So EMC was there and Cisco was there. Uh, so uh, I, I didn't see any V blocks uh, specifically, uh, but Cisco was definitely talking about it, and EMC was talking about it. Uh, I, I stopped by the EMC booth. It was the Ionics people, so they were talking about the latest in UIM uh, 2.0. So mm -hmm. that's the, the unified uh, manager, which is specifically for V blocks. So definitely, you had pieces of it from both sides of the coalition. Who else did you see at the show? Um, so uh, the other uh, big one there uh, was was Dell. So uh, Dell actually had one of the keynotes on Thursday. Uh, Dario Zamer. Mm -hmm. um, who is the, the new kind of czar general manager of the networking space and I got to sit down with him which was really quite interesting because if you think from a networking standpoint you know well how does Dell really fit into that picture um, and I asked him that question and, and uh, he was very kind of frank and honest and saying you know I, I asked that same thing when I interviewed Dell is not you know they have uh, their own kind of low consumer end uh, product line but mostly they're doing things through partnering so uh, their big partners are Juniper Brocade and Aruba Networks on the wireless side. And uh, he said really his job is to uh, give Dell some credibility in the space, uh, first working with their partners and eventually growing, uh, you know, of course, probably their services with their Perot acquisition uh, and uh, try, trying to get into that space a little more as they build their converged infrastructures. So we saw well, Dell bought Equalogic, um, it tried to buy 3PAR yep. to do the high end storage play. Uh, you just mentioned the Perot acquisition. Obviously, Dell is transforming itself. Do you see Dell? actually acquiring a networking company. So uh, I, I asked him that specifically, and uh, if you look at the options that they have out there, you know, they're not going to buy Juniper. Juniper is just way too big. Too it's, rich. You know, twelve to fifteen billion dollars uh, for that acquisition. Uh, you know, I, they're not going to buy Brocade. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's also, you know, three to four billion dollars at least uh, from what Brocade's market cap is. Um, he said that if they made an acquisition, uh, it would probably be something on the smaller side, something on the edge. So if you look at what IBM did recently with the Blade Networks BNT acquisition, that was rumored to be somewhere between the three and four hundred million dollar range. Or even look at what Cisco did a few years back uh, with buying. Linksys, which was about a $500 million, million dollar acquisition. So if you look at where Dell plays in the marketplace, they're not going to get a core you know, switch supplier. They're not going to be competing with the Cisco Nexus 7000 uh, or, or uh, you know, some of the products that Juniper makes at the core, but at the edge, which is a little more defensive, and at the, the line where the server and uh, networking and virtualization all play into space, uh, there, there could be an acquisition or uh, in the consumer space if it made sense. So. Okay, so you saw HP, Dell, how about Cisco? Was it, were they at the show? Uh, Cisco was definitely at the show, uh, and uh, talking a lot about UCS, talking about their networking, they had a lot of partners in there, and uh, I mean, Cisco plays across the board. They've got uh, a broad portfolio, they were partnering with everyone, uh, so uh, yeah, yeah, they're absolutely still strong. Um, I heard, uh, I talked to uh, Mike Fratto from uh, Network uh, Computing, mm -hmm. and he said they had just done a survey of the networking group, and I think they found uh, over 60% of everyone they surveyed said uh, that no matter what, they're not going to switch from their uh, existing vendors. So really good news for Cisco there that, you know, they're, they're well entrenched. They've got good product line. 
And uh, the, the second question was, what would make you uh, switch from that? And it has to be, a, you know, a really large, significant change, uh, not just in cost, but uh, benefits as to, uh, you know, how you can operate. And so it, it's going to be tough for c people to unseat Cisco. So what do you think about HP's converged strategy? Do you think they'll be able to, to take Cisco on? Uh, so, so, you know, HP's really bought themselves in the t into the number two spot, and they have the, the most number of pieces of the stack. They've really got a full stack. Uh, the only piece of the stack uh, that you say they might not have is fiber channel and to be honest they're not interested in acquiring yeah. that uh, so uh, I think HP is making some good moves uh, they've always bundled an automated solution so if you want to buy a whole rack or buy a whole pod uh, you know buy it all from HP and do, they, they've do got those pieces uh, together and it, 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 it's sticky does and HP have the most robust stack for converged infrastructure in your opinion um so, I mean, you can always argue on each individual piece. I mean, from a storage standpoint, they've got some tough competition. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll see how this all shakes out with what's going on with 3PAR. From right. a networking standpoint, um, everyone's got the same message today. We're flattening the network. We're going from a three-tier network down to a two-tier network. Uh, virtualization is a big play in here. Uh, it's... If you look at the advantage that Cisco has had for many years is they've got, you know, just a huge number of people that are certified for Cisco. Uh, there was a great article uh, by Greg Farrow, etherealmind.com, saying that, you know, hey, networking folks, your job is not working for Cisco. And HP answered this really well recently. They just uh, announced their new certification trainings that... Uh, while you can be a CCIE or a CCNA on Cisco, now you can get HP certified. And if you're already certified on Cisco, you kind of get credits towards uh, working with HP products. So uh, they said uh, if you're fully certified on Cisco and you have a similar product line on HP, you could get, I think it was 77% uh, of, your, of your certification already done. So you just need to kind of wrap it up. Uh, it reminds me in college if you'd, you know, taken a course, uh, you know, at one place and, and you just need to kind of pass an extra mm -hmm. test. It makes it real easy uh, for that infrastructure. And what HP took that a step further in saying, not only the networking certifications, but they have the server certifications and the storage certifications, and you can become a fully cross-trained certified uh, professional, which is where we really think is the stacks coming together. Uh, we're going to need those experts that can go across all the, all the different technologies. Was um, Oracle at the show? I did not see Oracle no, at the would, show would, at all. Would Sun normally be at this event, or not necessarily? Uh, you'd think you'd see Sun yeah. at the show, absolutely. I mean, they had they had the storage vendors there. Uh, yeah, they, okay. they had the server vendors. Uh, IBM wasn't there. No, uh, IBM, how about Juniper? Uh, Juniper it? wasn't there. From a networking standpoint, uh, Force 10 had a big booth there. Um, seemed to have a lot of uh, people showing up, especially when they had T-shirts and trinkets. Um, no Juniper, no Arista. Um, what about QLogic? Um, no QLogic. Uh, so, I mean, QLogic's typically embedded uh, for a lot of these technologies, but Emulex was there. Their CTO was giving a keynote. Uh, and if you talk about kind of the cross-training, uh, Emulex, uh, I, I spoke with uh, Sean Walsh, mm -hmm. uh, marketing from Emulex, and they were talking about this book that they had uh, where if you're a storage guy or if you're a networking guy, yeah, you can learn about uh, how to provision from either point of view. So... Uh, Kind of choose your own adventure, almost. Okay, so some good education there. So we've seen a big, big thrust on training. So you're saying Emulex, uh, HP. Um, let's see, anything else we should know about the show? Any other big themes before we wrap? Um, yeah, you know, I think right convergence. Uh, you know, update fiber channel over Ethernet is is making progress. So you know, we we've talked about plenty, Dave. You know, customers don't want a new protocol. Um, if you look at where we are today, uh, everybody was talking about kind of, you know, how fast people are moving to 10 gigabit Ethernet. Uh, the reality is that we're today shipping more 8 gig fiber channel ports today than we are 10 gigabit Ethernet ports. And if you look, 8 gig fiber channel is only just now starting to ship more ports than 4 gigs. So fiber channel is much bigger than 10 gigabit Ethernet. Of course, 1 gigabit Ethernet is, you know, something like 8 times bigger than um, one than, than fiber channel today. So um, just when you talk scales of markets, um, the new stuff always gets the most hype, um, but uh, the reality is most people are always trying to get the most out of what they have today, extend what they have, and uh, you know these transitions take many years to kind of come to fruition. Well, we've said on Wikibon there's $25 billion of assets built up around fiber channel. That's hardware and software assets, not even including all the processes and procedures around them. So you know people aren't just going to rip and replace that. One, one other piece of news, uh, I think last week was, uh, 
Uh, QLogic announced the new CEO, uh, Simon Bittescombe, right? yep. is going to be new CEO taking over for HK. What's absolutely. Update us on that. HK is uh, is hanging on as chairman? So, or? yeah, HK is staying on as chairman, and absolutely we expect that he'll be giving his vision going forward. Uh, so uh, we've met Simon. Uh, he's been with the company for uh, about three years now, I think. And actually, you know, this is the second time that HK has stepped aside, but it does look that uh, HK has really put together a good succession in place. Uh, when we got to go to the analyst day, uh, it was really showing off. Off the, the the deep bench that QLogic has there, uh, so it's not just Simon, but uh, all the people that they've got lined up in depth in, in the different organizations. So. HK is a real visionary, right? And and Simon's obviously an operational execution guy. Sure. Do you think this is a sign that they're they're maybe setting the company up to for a sale? Uh, you, you know, I think if there was going to be any sale, it probably would have happened a year or two ago. So Convergence is uh, well on its way. Uh, QLogic's trying to position themselves as the number one adapter vendor when we go to 10 gigabit and Convergence. And this is where the battle is. So Emulex is trying to be there. QLogic's trying to be, be there. Intel's trying to maintain that number one position. And Broadcom's also there. So uh, I think we'll have a real battle over the next, you know, 18 to 24 months. Uh, Sean Walsh from Emulex said it's really, if you look at the next generation of Intel architecture, that's where the battle will be. So we're at the Niantic today, and once we go to that next generation, that's where the design wins will really kick in and we'll have higher bandwidth. And uh, we should have a little bit better clarity as to where uh, the number one and number two players are and then the kind of the, the also rams. Okay, we're live here from Wikibon headquarters with Stu Miniman. And uh, Stu, thanks very much for the update on, on Interop and uh, the, the vendor roundup. And uh, appreciate you spending a few minutes with us talking about the themes of the show. Thanks, Dave.